السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن شاء الله we'll go through verses 13 to 16 from 13 to 16 from سورة الزمر and we'll wait for a minute till everybody join إن شاء الله تعالى it's, uh, it's my fault uh, with regards to the times may Allah سبحانه وتعالى guide us all إن شاء الله تعالى So we'll go through verses 13 to 16. And also, I'm not sure when I put the, the numbers of the verses and when people join in, do they see uh, the numbers or it needs to be uh, put again? I uh, will start with the recitation, inshallah. Verses 13 to 16 from Surah Az-Zumar, Surah number 39. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim قل إني أخاف إن عصيت ربي عذاب يوم عظيم قل الله أعبد مخلصا له ديني فاعبدوا ما شئتم من دونه قل إن الخاسرين الذين خسروا أنفسهم وأهليهم يوم القيامة ألا ذلك هو الخسران المبين لهم من فوقهم ظلل من النار ومن تحتهم ظلل ذلك يخوف الله به عباده يا عبادي فاتقون The first ayah قل إني نون وشدة Two counts and then four to five counts أخاف إن عصيت ربي عذاب يوم عظيم قل الله أعبد مخلصا له ديني تنوين أفتر الكلام نغن مخلصا له ديني فاعبدوا ما شئتم two means one with two counts ما شئتم من إخفاء من دوني قل إن نون الشدة takes two counts قل إن الخاسرين الذين خسروا four or five counts أنفسهم إخفاء وأهليهم يوم القيامة ألا ذلك هو الخسران المبين لهم two memes لهم من إخفاء من فوقهم ظلال تنوين after it mean من النار نون الشدة ومن إخفاء تحتهم ظلل ذلك يخوف الله به عباده يا عبادي فاتقون This is continuation of these verses that starts with قل to the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام and to the Ummah of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام uh, and uh, قل إني أخاف إن عصيت ربي عذاب يوم عظيم Before that, it starts with قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ We went through this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the believers, the true servants of Allah, to fear Allah and to be dutiful to Allah, and giving them the glad tidings, the rewards that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for them. 
and saying also to the Prophet والسلام, that he has been commanded to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, purely. The religion is only to Allah and I, I have been commanded to be the first of the Muslims. Then this ayah, قُلْ إِنِّي أَخَافُ إِنْ عَصَيْتُ رَبِّي عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ which means, say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, verily, if I disobey my Lord, I am afraid of the torment of the great day. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah, Allah alone I worship by doing religious deeds sincerely for his sake only, and not to show off and not to set up rivals with him in worship. So worship what you like besides him. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the losers are those who will lose themselves and their families on the day of resurrection. Verily, that will be a manifest loss. They uh, shall have coverings of fire or above them and covering of fire beneath them. With this, Allah does frighten his slaves. O my slaves, therefore, fear me. The first ayah, قُلْ إِنِّي أَخَافُ إِنْ عَصَيْتُ رَبِّي عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I fear, inni akhafu, I fear in asaytu rabbi, if I disobey my Lord, adaba yawmin azim, a torment, a punishment, in that great day, which is the day of al-qiyamah. And uh, this is a condition. The punishment in the day of judgment is conditioned by the sin. And the Prophet, alayhi salatu wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him from sins. He does not commit sins. And the ayah and the meaning of it, as Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, he says, uh, That means what is meant by this is other than the Prophet والسلام, as an obvious meaning of the verse. And, and also the Prophet والسلام, that the level of the Prophet والسلام, uh, came about as a result of his full submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sincerely worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and being away from sins. So he said, alayhi salatu was salam, or he is commanded to say, that I'm afraid if I disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in what he commanded me, as mentioned in the previous verses, with al-ikhlas, with sincerity, with al-islam, azim, a punishment in a great day, where those who would, commit shirk will be in it forever in the hellfire and those who are punished they're subjected to the punishment unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them and it shows that again the relationship between a person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of the prophets of Allah they reach the level of goodness it's because of their obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قُلْ إِنِّي أَخَافُ إِنْ عَصَيْتُ رَبِّي عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ Shows the evil consequences of sins. قُلِ اللَّهَ أَعْبُدُ مُخْلِصَ اللَّهُ دِينِ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I worship. مُخْلِصَ اللَّهُ دِينِ Purely, sincerely, my religion is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is also, it shows how, say, and then the first word is mentioned is Allah. And it's definitely uh, of a greater meaning than say, A'budullah. It says, Allah A'bud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that I worship, which makes it very exclusive. And it's, this is like, as Imam Sa'di rahimahullah, he said, While I'm worshipping Allah. That means I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in state of ikhlas, in state of purity, sincerity, that my ibadah is sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my dini is my obedience and my worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَعْبُدُوا مَا شِئْتُمْ مِنْ دُونِ Which is here a severe warning to them. فَعْبُدُوا مَا شِئْتُمْ مِنْ دُونِ Then worship whoever uh, you will besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is again like يقول يا أيها الكافرون and, and this is a severe warning to them and it's not to be taken of course from someone that might have a foolish understanding is to approve for them to worship whatever they are worshipping it's a warning to them فَعْبُدُوا مَا شِئْتُمْ مِنْ دُونِ continue to worship other than Allah continue to associate partners with Allah because there's no 
forcing anyone to change anyone's belief, of course. And no coercion matters of religion, but this is in itself is a warning. فَعْبُدُوا مَا شِئْتُمْ مِنْ دُونِي Because he says afterwards, قُلْ إِنَّ الْخَاسِرِينَ الَّذِينَ خَاسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَهْلِيمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Indeed, the khasirin, the loser ones, are those who lost themselves and their families in the day of al-qiyamah. So this is the real loss. And as mentioned before to the disbelievers, قُلْ تَمَتَّعْ بِكُفْرِكَ قَلِيلًا إِنَّكَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ النَّارِ that means enjoy your disbelief in this world, Khalil, a very small amount of time. Enjoy your disbelief. Enjoy the, the, the life that you're living because your abode, your final result is the hellfire. So it's not really enjoyment. So the same, it doesn't mean that for them to enjoy or to approve their enjoyment, it's warning them. And as mentioned before, it's like when a person says to his child or does, says to someone, do whatever you want. You know, in, in a way that he is angry with him and he knows that what he's doing is wrong. He's not approving what he's doing, but rather this is more of a warning than anything else. And Ibn Abbas, he said, there's no one uh, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for them a spouse in Jannah. So if he enters the hellfire, he loses himself and his family. And of course, this is the real loss when people have this attachment in their life to their wealth, to their family, and they lose all of this in the day of judgment. And only the believers, they don't lose anything. All of what they gained in this world, it's going to be for them and more in the day of judgment. Uh, this is the real khusran. This is the real loss. So as always mentioned, the Qur'an gives us the proper understanding of everything. And therefore, we have to see things according to the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our definition of the gain and loss, our definition of uh, happiness and sadness and misery and all of these things. We have to get that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the ability to understand and he sets example in the Quran after example and the matter becomes very clear so again the example here that is mentioned in the previous verses if someone is given all of the joy that they would think and would not even think of in this world uh, but they are told say for example enter this house and enjoy yourself for a day for two for whatever time and then after you're done, go down to the basement because they're going to cut you into pieces. right? And they will torture you. Uh, and if it's only one time, if it's like a person would, that would happen to him and he loses his life, which is nothing compared to the punishment in the hereafter. Would a wise person goes to that house and enjoy himself and do whatever he wants with the, the price that he will uh, uh, pay as a result of that and that is to be killed? No one, no one wise, no one with, with, with the least amount of intellect would ever do such a thing. So this is the same thing when it comes to the enjoyment of this life. If it's in the sinful way, if it's in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the real loss. If a person loses in the hereafter, this is the real loss because it's an everlasting loss. And then the next verse describes this loss. لَهُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ ظُلَلٌ مِنَ النَّارِ وَمِنْ تَحْتِهِمْ ظُلَلٌ ذَلِكَ يُخَوِّفُ اللَّهُ بِهِ عِبَادَةِ يَا عِبَادِي فَاتَّقُونَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described their affairs in the hellfire. لَهُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ ظُلَلٌ From on top of them, ظُلَلٌ Covering from the hellfire, like shades of the fire. وَمِنْ تَحْتِهِمْ ظُلَلٌ And from underneath them the same way, ظُلَلٌ Shades from the fire. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَهُمْ مِنْ جَهَنَّمَ مِهَادٌ وَمِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ غَوَش what covers them is from the fire. They're immersed into the fire. When the punishment will cover them from above them and from underneath their, their foot. And it will be said to them, So this is how the punishment, they are immersed in the fire from underneath them, from on top of them. Their clothings are from fire. And we know what fire is. Nobody would ever dare to put his finger 
uh, or his tip of a finger in in the fire or, or in a fire for uh, for any time. Uh, then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Dariqa yuhawif Allah bi ibadah." This is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is bringing the fear of Allah in the hearts of His slaves. That means this, this is we are informed by this, so that people feel Allah Subhanahu wa Taala alone. And when they feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what's going to happen? They'll stay away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade and from sins. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibadi fattaqun, O my slaves, fear me. Sheed yourself from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Imam Sa'di rahimahullah, he says how the, uh, the evil consequences of the, the disbelievers in the day of judgment and what's going to happen to them, lahum min fawqihim dhulalum min al-nari, parts and uh, of the fire, as he says here in the tafsir, like the to them in the half fire, like clouds, and from underneath them too. And also, there are mentioned in other verses, that means their, their pants are from Qataran, so their clothings are from fire, their beds are from fire, and the is like something like the clouds on top of them from the fire. Everything is, you know, they are immersed in it. Uh, so this is Allah This is the way to our hearts for people to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for the people of the Hafir is a da'i. This is a caller that is calling us to the taqwa of Allah, to the fear of Allah, to be obedient to Allah. Is a caller that is calling us to stay away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade. So he says, Imam Sa'di, فَسُبْحَانَ مَنْ رَحِمَ عِبَادَ Glory be to Allah, the one that has mercy upon his slaves in every matter. And he made easy for them every path that would make them reach to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he encouraged them. And he gave them all kinds of means for them to be upon it. Uh, in which uh, the believers, when they hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for the believers, and the rewards of the deeds in this life and in the hereafter. And at the same time, he warned them of every action that would bring to them the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he mentioned to them the means that they, if they take these means, they put themselves into danger and they become among the people of the Hawfayr. So therefore, at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibadi fattakun. As Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he said, Ya ibadi, that means ya awliya'i. Those who are loyal to me those who are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then fear me. So some said that Ya Ibadi refers to the believers, and some said it's for everyone. And of course it's true for everyone that they need to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for the believers, because they are the ones that truly fear Allah, and they take the message, and they apply it. So when we look at the, at the verses, and uh, how uh, you know the, the the verses that starts with Qul as as the entire Quran we need to really make sure that it uh, enters our hearts because the Prophet والسلام, he's been told say even though every verse in the Quran it's a message conveyed to the people right but the significance of Qul that means this is such an important thing this is something to pay attention to and uh, the Prophet والسلام, conveyed the message perfectly. So say, قُلْ إِنِّي أَخَافُ Indeed, I أَخَافُ أَخَافُ from وَوْفَاء That means I fear. And الخوف is when someone is expecting something harmful. Whether it's because of a, of a sin that is known or something that might be even not certain. The خوف, the fear will come, which is the opposite of security. So if people take the means of the hellfire, then this is what is prepared for them unless they repent to Allah, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them. قُلْ إِنِّي أَخَافُ إِنْ عَصَيْتُ This is the condition. If I disobey from عَيْنْ صَادِيَا رَبِّي مَيْ لُرْدْ عَذَابَ The punishment of يَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ Of a great day. قُلْ Then again say, قُلِ اللَّهَ أَعْبُدِ Say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I worship. And this is uh, changing the orders of the, the, the sentence to give uh, more meaning, uh, which the meanings of al-ikhlas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that I worship. Uh, only, none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from Ain Ba'dal. 
Mukhlisan, sincerely, and this is the state that the person is in from Kha Lam Sad, and we said that Al Ikhlas is to purify something from impurity. So it's an action to be done and not just comes by default. Mukhlisan Lahu Dini, my religion, and my religion, my obedience to Allah. Fa'budu, the fa here, then worship, Abudu, and Rao Alif at the end for the plural tense. Fa'budu ma shi'tum, ma is ism musul, in the meaning of al levi. Like worship the one that you will. Uh, from Sheen, yeah, Alif. Fa'budu ma shi'tum min duni, besides him. And it proves that the human beings, they have a will. And that's why, and whoever denies this, they are crazy. So uh, that's why they're. Uh, uh, the rewards, their punishment is based on the actions that they did. They they did uh, upon their own will. min duni from other than him. From adun is something closer, something less. So he less than Allah subhanahu wa taala, other than Allah subhanahu wa taala. And then qul inna indeed al khasirin the losers from khasin ra and the losers and al khusran. The loss is any loss, whether it's someone someone has some money and he uses it for uh, for tijara for trade, then he loses it. This is uh, the how the khusran comes from. Uh, so when someone uh, loses something, so the real khusran, the real loss, because people they define loss limited only to the loss of this world. No, well, in al khasirin al ladina khasiru. Indeed, those who khasiru, those who lost anfusahum, themselves. How can a person lose himself? Himself, he's supposed to save it. He's supposed to save himself. He's supposed to make himself enter the, the Jannah. But instead, he loses himself. Loses himself by making himself uh, among the people of the Hawfayr. Wa ahlihim and their families from Alif Ha. Lam yawm al The day of al the day of al Resurrection from Qaf Wawmi. Allah, unquestionably, to get the attention of the people, no doubt. Allah Dalika, this is this Musharra, this is, is the Allah Dalika, who al Khusran, the Khusran, the real loss, Al Mubin, the clear loss. So, how the verse is stressed with all kinds of means, Allah, which means indeed, no doubt, you know, this is the, the real Khusran. So, Allah uh, Dalika, this is the real Khusran, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated. Lahum, for them, min fawqim, from above them, from fawq, dhulal, coverings from dha, uh, lam, lam. Na dhulal, shade, covering. Right, and it's, um, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the muttaqeen, in the muttaqeen fi dhulali wa'yum, the muttaqeen are in shades and springs. Uh, so dhulal or the shades is mentioned in the Quran in many verses, uh, which is basically what, what's on top of the person. So dhulalun min min from anar from fire, wa min tahtihim and from underneath and below them, dhulal also covering from the fire. Thalik or what is being mentioned, yuhawif threatens in the present tense that Allah subhanahu wa taala is bringing the fear of Allah subhanahu wa taala. In the hearts of the people. Bihi ibadah. Only the ibadah of Allah. Only the servants of Allah. They are the ones that would fear Allah. Those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his favor upon them. They would fear him. So if you find yourself having the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That would make you away from uh, committing sins and be obedient to Allah. Then this is a great favor from Allah. Ya ibadi fattakun. O my slaves fattakun. Therefore fear me. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fulfill the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These verses, as you see, it's supposed to have an effect in our hearts. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts. And when the Prophet والسلام, is commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to convey this message and no excuse whatsoever but to follow it. You know, and the day of judgment and how is what's, what's in the Day of Judgment and the punishment of Allah that made the Sahaba, عنهم, the early generations of Islam, don't waste anything of their time, of their life. You know, to the extent of which that you would think these people have any physical enjoyment in this life. Of course they did. 
they did not deprive themselves from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala per permitted. But it's when a person talks about the hereafter, when we when we hear about the hellfire, right? Uh, it's by the mercy of Allah that we might even tend to forget sometimes. Otherwise, there's no enjoyment in this life whatsoever. And uh, unless a person is obedient to Allah, how can someone enjoy the disobedience of Allah, knowing that he is taken to the hellfire if he continue to be in that state? So to feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be obedient to Allah, and it's by the mercy of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not command us to do anything that is over our capacity. And as the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for people to be patient. Uh, so be patient as we heard. Be patient with regards to the commands of Allah. Don't say, if things are difficult, I would disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What can I do? My job is this. My wealth is this. My, all of that is just be patient. Seek rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would replace your situation with something that is better for you. And what if, you know, some people, they, they spend all of their life struggling, a struggle after a struggle. If it's after this life, they will be among the people of Jannah. And then what is a better choice than that? Right. And on the other side, if someone enjoyed a life of sin, they did not enjoy anything. And this is how we have to work on our minds and our hearts to establish this. And the importance of the Tawheed, the sincerity of worship. And the warning of uh, whoever worship other than Allah, it's, uh, they're free to do that. But it's not to be approved, of course. There's difference between approving an action in your heart. And that's why we have to be careful with the evil actions. Some people, they fall into some form of, uh, of statements that can uh, give uh, the wrong perception of things. You know, if people are, are doing something or, or if you're in a land where people are free to commit sins, you cannot force them to do otherwise, but you cannot approve their actions, meaning that you would say that this is, you know, um, it's okay. It's okay for them. You know, uh, this is, we have to be sincere to the people. And warning the people of danger, it doesn't mean that you are spreading hate, for example. Right? Actually, you, you will be evil to the people if you don't warn them. If you know that there's a punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if people... Uh, you know, people warn each other from eating, you know, unhealthy foods. Does that mean they have, uh, you know, hatred towards these people? You know, and it's it's all silly stuff in this world. Imagine when it comes to the real purpose of this life. And at the same time, they don't cause any harm to them physically in this world. They only invite them and they only warn them. So the real loss is the loss in the, in the day of judgment. So when we put things in perspective, you know, if someone lose anything in this world was it a loss in matters of deen or it's a loss of matters of uh, physical things in this world if it's physical things in this world we can always make it up and for the deen to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the real loss is the loss of one's religion uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and the importance and the virtue of taqwa of Allah the verses have great benefits but we need to the benefits comes when we're not just told about it but when we repeat the verses and purify our hearts with it and reflect upon it and to think, to look at these words of these verses and to think and to reflect and to act upon what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Barakallahu feekum. Jawa, continue tomorrow. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Barakallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.